Good morning, Church. I trust you all are well and blessed. My tithes and offering message for this morning. These two words are often spoken in the same breath, but what's the difference between them? Tithe literally means tenth or ten percent. A tithe is a first tenth of your income. An offering is anything you give in addition to ten percent. In 2 Corinthians 8 7, we are encouraged to excel in the grace of giving because God influences the world through his people. He gives to you so he can give through you. As we faithfully give, the world is changed for the glory of God. The life of Jesus offered is preached, people are fed, brokenness is healed, churches are built, and each of us in turn are blessed by God so that we can give again. Our offerings are an act of worship. The offering during the worship service provides believers the opportunity to respond in gratitude to the grace, love, and mercy of God, and to put their faith and trust in the Lord into action. The offering to God each Sunday is an act of worship, just like confessing the word, songs of praise and worship, and prayer are all acts of worship. Remember this, that no one has ever become poor by giving. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in our lives. Tithing is a reminder that God is a supplier of everything we have. It is also God's personal invitation to experience an outpouring of his blessing in each of our lives. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, God essentially says, Go ahead, I dare you, see if you can outgive me. The tithe is the foundation of your financial success because you must give it first. The tithe provides protection for your finances and other possessions. Uh, when, we give to, when we give the tithe, the word of God says that we are positioned to receive because the windows of heaven are opened and a blessing is poured out. And we have protection because a devourer cannot destroy the fruits of the ground or the vine. Don't argue or debate with God about giving your tithe. Just do it. Don't develop a bad attitude or complain about it. The Lord established the tithe for your provision and protection. You should shout and rejoice that he loves you so much that he made a way for you to have increase and protection. He takes care of you and ensures your future. Look, let's look at what God told Abraham in Genesis 12, uh, 1 to 3. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. So you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. In all the families of the earth you will be blessed. The Lord spoke to Abraham and told him to leave his country. Then he made Abraham a great promise. Abraham would become a great nation. He would bless Abraham and make Abraham a blessing. God promised all the families of the earth will be blessed through Abraham. The Lord didn't promise to only bless Abraham. He promised to make Abraham a blessing to others. And through Abraham, all families of, of the earth will be blessed. We know Jesus ultimately fulfilled that prophecy. The blessings didn't stop with Abraham or even with his immediate family. His blessings flowed to others. God's purpose for prosperity is so that when he blesses you, you can be a blessing to others. Unless you bless others, you are not publicly prosperous. You must also change your thinking and your confession. If you are giving tithes and offerings, you are prosperous. Quit saying, I am poor, and start saying, God is with me. I am his home. God lives in me. I am a tither. I am a giver. Therefore, I am successful and prosperous. Meditate on 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 until it becomes part of your spirit. When, you're, when your financial situation begins to look grim, read that passage and thank God you are prosperous. Write it down and post it all over your home. Do whatever you need to do to fully accept God's promise of prosperity. Amen. I thank you and I pray you've been blessed. Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our broadcast this morning, the second Sunday of the year, twenty. 21 the 10th of january 2021 our year of our lord jesus christ the year of shafat which is promised to be for us a year of favor a year of abundance and overflow we thank god for the glorious year that he has blessed us with and we thank god for yet another wonderful opportunity to hear his precious word 
Well, before we go into the Word of God this morning, I'd like to encourage you to get a get your notebook ready, get a pen, and most importantly, get your Bible as we share the Word of God together. Praise God. Well, before we begin, let us open this morning in a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you this morning for this glorious opportunity to hear your word being preached. According to your word, O oh God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray this morning, O oh God, that you'll anoint my vocal cords to declare your word to your people. I pray for all those that are watching us, that are joining us. Father God, wherever they are, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch them in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord God, that you'll breathe life into the words that I will share with your people this morning. I pray that the word will, O oh Lord God, be sown on the fertile hearts of men and women, young and old, that are joining us this morning. I pray that the people of God will grow. I pray that they will increase. I pray that they will flourish. I pray that they will prosper in the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Almighty God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you all the worship, O oh God. We thank you for this in Jesus' magnificent name. And the people of God say amen amen and amen well praise god this is pastor ricardo from um, faith center international rama newcastle in uh, the northern part of kzn in south africa and i want to welcome you this morning and this morning i'd like to speak to you on the subject of god's desire for you to prosper um, you know very often when you um, listen to people and you see what's happening around you, you often hear the words of people echoing in society and all over. People saying there's so many bad things that are happening in the world. Some people are saying that, you know, bad things are all over. Well, as true as that may sound, the truth of the matter is that as much as there is bad thing, there are bad things happening around us and, you know, bad stuff is happening everywhere. Over and above that, we must understand and realize as children of God that God is all over. Our God is an omnipresent God. So God is all over and he's over the bad things that are happening. He's in complete control over what's happening. As much as there are bad things that are happening, God too is happening. God too is working in the lives of people. So I want to encourage you this morning to take a brief moment this morning and just meditate on that, that God is still in control. As we, you know, we've just entered into a new year. It's just over a week now that we're in a new year. I want to share with you as a foundational text in the book of Joshua chapter number six and if you could highlight this or write it on a piece of paper and um, stick it up on your on your dressing table or in your wardrobe and every morning I want you to meditate on this these are the words of God to Joshua and I believe that these are the words of God to us on a daily basis it is God's desire to commune with us daily that's why I want to encourage you, this verse that I'm going to share with you, write it down and repeat it to yourself daily. The first thing when you wake up in the morning, if it means putting it up on the ceiling, wake up with that word so that you're looking at what God is saying to you. And God is saying exactly the same thing to us today. He hasn't changed and he never changes. In the book of Joshua chapter number six and verse number two, we find here God speaking to Joshua. They're about to enter into Jericho. I don't know what your Jericho may have been, but the good news is that you, are, you have overcome. The word of God says we've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Now Joshua chapter 6 and verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, I want you to put your name there. The Lord says to Ricardo, that's me, 
I don't know what your name is, but you put your name there. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Wow, I like that. God saying to you, See, I have given whatever that difficulty is that you are facing. God has given that into your hand. Not only has he done that, he's given the king, he's given the chief in charge and all the mighty men of valor in your hand. God says to you, see, I have given you 2021 into your hand. In other words, it's a challenge to you and I to seize the opportunity. It's a challenge to you and I to seize the day. That's why I'm saying on a daily basis, wake up with those words. See, I have given to you, tomorrow will be Monday. God saying to you, see, I have given to you Monday, the 11th of January, 2021. And do that on a daily basis. Keep repeating the word of God. Hallelujah. A lesson I learned from my spiritual father, Dr. Singh, is that repetition is the mother of all invention. So you've got to repeat it until it becomes a part of you. So God says to Joshua, I've given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. In verse 16, Joshua says to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The Lord has given you the city. God has given you the opportunity. It's up to you and I to take possession of it. It's up to you and I to seize it. To seize means to grab a hold of. And that's what God wants you and I to do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may I remind you this morning that God has given to us an everlasting covenant of prosperity. An everlasting covenant of prosperity. If you read the word of God, this is God's covenant with you and I. Everything that you need for your life is found in the word of God. It's all in this covenant and it's in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. If it's fear you need to overcome, it's in the covenant. If it's poverty and lack you need to overcome, it's in the, it's in the covenant. It's in the word of God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the, situa what the situation is or what the challenge is, but the word of God, this is our covenant. And God has a covenant of prosperity with you and I. It's an everlasting covenant. Praise God. Now, um, I mentioned to you that one of the things that God has promised us and he desires for us in this year, 2021, is to prosper us. According to the dictionary, I looked at the dictionary definition of prosperity and the dictionary will give you a worldly perspective of what prosperity is. But biblical prosperity goes way deeper than that. Biblical prosperity is much higher and much deeper than that. It's wider than that. According to the dictionary, the dictionary defines um, prosperity as such. It says prosperity means to be flourishing, thriving good fortune, and successful social status in terms of monetary wealth and happiness. That's the world view of prosperity. But biblical prosperity is God's ability and power at work in and through us. It's the, it's the ability of God that flows in our lives, that flows through our lives. Hallelujah. And I want to uh, go with you to the book of um, John's epistle, St. John's epistle, uh, 3 John and verse number 2. Now, John speaking to the church and he's speaking to you and I, he says, beloved, beloved, that, that is how God sees you as his beloved, his beloved child. He says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Beloved, I wish above all things. In other words, what he's saying is, he's not just saying I wish. It's not, that word wish, it means to pray. It means a prayer. His prayer, his desire, and his will is that the people of God would prosper and be in health, even as their soul prospers. 
Hallelujah. That is God's desire for you. And that that is it. God, John's desire was not just for himself. His desire was that others would prosper. And I believe that's a challenge to you and I too. Very often, the world's prosperity is focused on self. That's worldly prosperity. is how you can prosper yourself. But true biblical prosperity is when you wish prosperity and pray prosperity on others. When others prosper, so you will prosper. What you send out is what you're going to receive. Hallelujah. So, he says, I wish and pray above all things, above all things, above everything else. I pray that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. That word prosper, uh, fr uh, translated from the Greek, yudu, it means to grant a prosperous and expeditious journey. I wish that God would grant you an, a prosperous and expeditious journey. In other words, your journey to be expedited. In other words, it will be shorter than what it normally would be. It also means to be led in a direct and easy way. In other words, a direct and an easy way to grant a successful issue. It means to help on the road. I wish that you would get help on the road. I pray that you get help on the road. It means to be well off. It means to make progress. That is what John was saying, is that I wish and I pray above all things that you would get help along the way. And that is how God is with us. God helps us along the way. It is God at work. That is biblical prosperity. It's not our doing. It's not our work. But it's the work of God in our lives. How God works in our lives and through our lives. And then he goes on to say, and be in health. The word health translated from the word hujiano, it means to be sound. It means to be sound, to be well. It means to be uncorrupt. It means to be whole. It means to enlarge. It means to grow, to wax, and to increase actively. And then he says, even as your soul prospers. Even as your soul prospers. So what he's saying is that as your soul prospers, he prays that just as your soul is prospering, that you would prosper and be in health in direct proportion to the prosperity of your soul. And the soul part of man, our soul part, that is the part that has, that receives eternal life. And there are, there are aids that God has given us. He has given us aids. He has given us tools by which we may enrich our souls. He's given us His Word. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's given us a direct means to communicate with him through prayer. As we pray and we meditate on the word of God, we keep ourselves in line with what God desires for us. And as your soul prospers that way, you find automatically everything about your life will prosper in proportion to what you feed your soul with. If you're feeding your soul with the undiluted word of God, yes, my friend, yes, my brother, my sister in Christ, yes, it will be well with you. You will prosper in proportion to the, what your soul prospers. Hallelujah. I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now, if we look at the book of Psalms, uh, chapter number 35, we find with young David. That's why it's so important for you and I to spend time with the Word of God so that we can acquaint ourselves with the covenant of God, so that we can acquaint us ourselves with what rightfully belongs to us as children of God. And David as a young man understood that when he was in the background looking after the sheep and he would play on his harp and praise God and he'd worship God, he began to get a God, a, 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 a mind a mindset and an image of God within him that when he faced Goliath he did not see the Goliath without but he saw the God within him 
who was greater than the Goliath without. That's why we can boldly say that greater is he in me than he that is in the world. It is purely by acquainting ourselves with the covenant, with the word of God, so that we know what's rightfully ours and we know rightfully how to operate in the kingdom of God and operate in the things of God whilst upon this earth. And we find this same David who slew Goliath the giant. He writes in Psalm 35 verse 27, you can go there with me. He says, let them shout for joy and be glad, who favor my righteous cause. Let them shout for joy and be glad. I believe that that's what God uh, desires for us every day, is that we would live a triumphant life where we would shout praises unto God. I shared with you in the book of Joshua chapter 6 verse 16, Joshua speaks to the nation of Israel and he tells them to shout for God had given them the city. And I believe every morning when you wake up, the Bible tells us, yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So God has given you a new day. It's a day where you can shout unto God, praises unto God, for he's given you another day. Praise God for that. Now David says, let them shout for joy and be glad, who favor my righteous cause. And let them say, let them say continually. You see that? Repetition. Let them say repetitively, continuously, constantly. Let them say, let the Lord be magnified. Hallelujah. Let the Lord be magnified. That's my prayer and that's my desire is that the Lord be magnified in your life. Let everybody around you, let them say, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. You see that God's pleasure is your prosperity. God's pleasure is his people. Psalm 149 verse 4 says, the Lord's pleasure is his people. And here David says, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That word prosperity in the Hebrew is a word many of us are familiar with, a word shalom. And we know shalom meaning peace, but it also means completeness. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the completeness of his servant. God wants you complete. God wants you whole. God wants you sound. Hallelujah. The word shalom means completeness. It means soundness. It means welfare. God delights and takes pleasure in your welfare, in your well-being. God is concerned about your well-being. It also means peace. As I mentioned, we are familiar with the word peace. It also means safety. God is concerned about your safety. God is concerned about your peace, your welfare, your safety. It also means quiet. It means tranquility. And greatest of them all, I like this one, friendship. You see that? Shalom also means friendship. Let them continually say, let, let the people continually say, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the friendship of his servant. Friend, God is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Jesus is that friend that stick it closer than a brother and he is close to you and he, that's the, the best friendship that you can make is the friendship you make with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God takes pleasure in being your friend. Hallelujah. He's a friend who will help you. You can call upon his name anytime he's there. Wherever you go, he is there. Whenever you need him, he is there. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's not like many times you'll phone a friend, you'll get a voicemail, or you'll phone a friend, and then you can't get through to your friend, or you'll probably... Um, want to text your friend and you don't get a response but with God you can call upon his name at any time and he's there you can pray and he answers he hears your prayers and he answers your prayers so God takes pleasure in friendship with you and a friend is one who comes to the aid of another and that is what John was praying he says 
when he spoke about prosperity, it means to get help on the road. And God is that friend who will give you help on the road. Whatever it is that God has laid upon your heart to do this year. That's why people very often every year when the year begins, they say they make a resolution. A resolution means that you are resolved to make a difference. But here's the thing. The resolution should always begin with God. Hallelujah. I want to quickly just share with you um, three examples from the Bible. And the first one is the example with Isaac in the book of Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis 26 and verse 13. The Bible speaking of Isaac says, And the man waxed great. Watch this. The man waxed great. To wax kind of means to fatten, to enlarge, to expand. And he says, The man waxed great and went forward. I like that. Not only did he wax great, but he went forward. And grew until he became very great. I want to break that up. He says the man works great. The word great from the Hebrew Gadal. It means to grow. It means um, to become great. It means to promote. It means to become important. It means to do great things. It means to advance. It means to exceed and to increase. So Isaac, the man Isaac, he increased. The man Isaac, he did great things. And I believe that's you this year. I believe you're going to do great things for God. I believe that you're going to become a person of importance. There is nobody that is insignificant in the economy of God. In the economy of God, everybody is important. Hence you find that is why when John prayed, he prayed also for the prosperity and the health of others. That should be our desire and that should be our prayer. We should pray for others, the prosperity of others. What you send out, I said before, is what you will get back. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the man works great and went forward. The word forward from the Hebrew halak, it means to proceed. It means to move. It means to go. It means to live. It means to spread speedingly. I like that. To spread speed, speedingly. It means to walk. So as Isaac became great, as he began to grow, all of a sudden he began to move. And I believe that you're going to be that person this year. You're going to be a person that's not going to be stagnant. But you're going to start moving in the things of God. What God has called you to do. It's time that you awaken to that. And it's time that you move towards it. Praise God. And the Bible says, and went forward and grew. The word grew from the Hebrew gadal. It means to become important. It means to excel and increase. So Isaac waxed great and went forward and grew. He became important. He excelled. Until, the Bible says, he became very great. Very, very meaning exceedingly. It means up to abundance. It means diligently. In other words, it means louder and louder. So, Isaac, because of his fellowship with God, because of his friendship with God, Isaac's life became louder and louder. And that's my prayer for you this year, is that may your life become louder and louder unto many. And God will do this, not so that you can get the recognition. It's never for your recognition, but it's all for His glory. It's all for His name's sake. Is that so that He may be made known among the nations that He is God. So that people, when people look at you, they say, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. They see God in you. I like the New King James puts it this way, that very verse. It says, the man Isaac began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. I like that. He began to prosper. That means your prosperity begins somewhere. And your prosperity begins with who you associate with.
Your prosperity begins with who you rub shoulders with. Your prosperity begins with God. Your prosperity begins with God. Hallelujah. When you begin with God, your prosperity begins. So you begin with Jesus. The day you received Jesus was the day prosperity visited you. And since prosperity has visited you, it's in no ways leaving you because he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. In the book of uh, the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God has given you his word. He's given you his word. Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11. As the rain uh, and the snow fall down from heaven and water the earth and cause it to bring forth and bud, even so shall it be with the word that I have sent. Hallelujah. It will accomplish the purpose for which I have sent it. And that is the word that God has given you. And every word that God has given us in his word concerning our welfare, concerning our prosperity, it will come to pass. My friend, my brother, my sister, do not give up. God has not given up on you. God never gives up. God never tires. God never forgets. God never sleeps. God is with you and is with you in a strong and a mighty way. As we read that very um, verse that I shared with you in Genesis 26, I just want to share something. I just feel the need to share this with you. Genesis 26, I told you verse 13, the Bible says the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. But where did it begin? It began with a seed. You see in verse number 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed, watch here, Isaac sowed in that land. Which land? The beginning of this chapter tells us there was a famine in the land. A famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. And, there's prob and right now we see famine happening around us. Hallelujah. There was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Now in that in that land of famine, we find Isaac sold in that land. In which land? The land of famine. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Now friends, very often we use that scripture when it comes to offering. But I'm not using it in terms of an offering now. I'm, I'm trying to get a point across to you this morning. Is that yes, we are in a land of famine. A land where the thinking and the mentality of humanity is a thinking and a mentality of doom, a thinking and a mentality of failure, a thinking and a mentality of weakness and frailty. That is the famine that we are experiencing. But I believe in this hour and in this time, God wants you to start taking the seed of his word and start sowing it in your heart. Start sowing it in your mind. Begin to see yourself as the word of God sees you. Begin to speak concerning yourself according to what the word of God says. Not according to what the world around you is dictating. Not according to what you see with your carnal eye. Not according to what you hear with your ears. But to truly take the word of God. The Bible says Isaac sowed that year in the year of famine. He sowed seed. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. How about you taking a breather this year from all the negativity, from all the negative information, from all the statistics? Enough with the statistics. Enough with all the calculations. Enough with all of that. How about you this morning, this day saying, I'm going to try God. I'm going to try the word of God. I'm going to take the word of God on a daily basis. And I'm going to sow it in my spirit. I'm going to sow it in my heart. I'm going to sow it in my mind. I'm going to get my mind shifted. I'm going to get my mind changed and renewed by the word of God. The Bible says that in that same year, Isaac reaped a hundredfold. And I believe that as you take the word of God and you start 
sowing it in your heart and sowing it in your spirit. I believe that God, you'll see how God will walk with you. It doesn't matter what the storm may be, but you'll walk through that storm. It doesn't matter how rough those seas may be, but you'll you, you will bring a stillness to them. You'll bring a calmness to them. Because when you take the word of God, you start sowing the peace of God in your heart. And you start speaking peace. You're releasing what is within you. And that's the living waters that flow from deep within your being. That will cause the seas to obey you. That will cause the storms to be still in the name of Jesus. I believe that with all of my heart. You will see how the way before you, the sea before you, where you will see suddenly how God makes a way where there is no way. You'll see that where there's nothing, how God will provide something for you. Why? Because of the word of God. The word is a creative word. And this is the covenant that we have. It's the covenant of creation. He is the creator of all things. He's the author of all things. He's the finisher of all things. And I believe that God has a story to write about your life today. It doesn't matter what your circumstance may be. It doesn't matter how hope that situation may be it doesn't matter how you may feel in your body but you take the word of God everything in the earth everything in the universe has been programmed has been designed to function according to the word of God hallelujah praise God so enough with the famine now don't have a famine mentality begin to have a prosperity mentality a God be for me mentality if God be for me who can be against me that should be your mentality praise God hallelujah hallelujah praise God begin begin to get rid of all the famine the thoughts of famine in your mind by putting the word of God there renew your mind the second example I want to give to you this morning is the example of King Uzziah King Uzziah was at the age of 16 a 16 year old young man he became king at the age of 16 in second chronicles 26 verse 5 we find that king uzziah the word the name uzziah uzziah means my strength is jehovah that's what it means his name means my strength is jehovah and that's my word to you this morning your strength is god god is your strength the bible says and uzziah saw sought god he sought God in the days of Zechariah. In the days of Zechariah. Zechariah means Jehovah remembers. The Lord remembers you. That's my prayer and that's my word to you this morning. Is that the Lord remembers. He's not a God who forgets. He doesn't have amnesia. He knows your name. He knows the numbers of hairs that are, that are on your head. He knows every minute detail about you. God is concerned about every minute detail of your life. Yes, he will prosper you. Yes, he will be with you. Yes, he will comfort you. Yes, he will strengthen you. Yes, he will see you through. Hallelujah. And every big thing that you face in your life, there's nothing that God doesn't know about. He knows about that. And yes, he will deal with that. There's nothing too big for God to handle in your life. The Bible says King Uzziah sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. Zechariah was a man who had discernment. We need discernment in our day. We need the spirit of discernment. And the only way we'll get that is through fellowship with God. Through reading the word of God, meditating on the word of God and spending time in prayer. Make your prayer, prayer time. It's not the quantity of the time that you spend in prayer, but it is the quality of that time. He sought God. King Uzziah sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Matthew 6 verse 33, Jesus told us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Put God first. Seek God. May God be the one and only desire that you sought after for this year 21. The Bible says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. The word prosper there is from the Hebrew salah. Salah means to advance. God made him advance. 
It means to make progress. God caused him to make progress. It means to succeed. God caused him to succeed. May God cause your plans to succeed this year. It means also to be profitable. He became profitable to his generation. May you become profitable to your generation. It means to push forward. It means to break out. It means to bring to a successful issue. I believe that God will cause you to break out of your limitations. God will cause you to break through those ceilings that have been set over you. I believe that God will cause you to grow and expand as long as you seek the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. Hallelujah. The last example that I want to share with you is the King Hezekiah. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter number 31 and verse 21, the Bible says, and in every work, watch here, in every work, the Bible tells us whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Second Chronicles 31, 21 is telling us, in every work that King Hezekiah began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. You see that? In every work that he began, in the service of the house of God, what has God called you to be of service in, in his house? Become a partner wherever you are fellowshipping. Become involved in the house of God. Become involved. You may say, but I can't sing, I can't do... It doesn't matter, but you can surely pray. You can pray for the house of God. You can pray for your pastors. You can pray for all the helpers. You can pray for the deacons, for the leaders, for the ushers. You can pray for all of them. You can pray, hallelujah. So in every work he began in the service of the house of God and in the law, in the law, in the word, and in the commandments, to seek his God. He was a man who sought God. He did it with all his heart. He didn't just seek, but he sought with all of his heart. And the Bible says, and prospered. In other words, he tzalacht. He advanced. He made progress. He became profitable. He pushed forward. He broke out. And he was brought to a successful issue. Two key points to your prosperity. I'm, I'm closing now. Two key points. Two key points which are important to your prosperity. Number one is having the mindset of Christ. Having the mindset of Christ. The mindset of Christ. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter number two. And verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross when you have the mindset of Christ it's a mindset of obedience to the father it's a mindset of obedience to what the father wants it's his will be done and not my will be done hallelujah the second and final key is having a change of heart renew your heart it's a heart issue amen it's a heart issue I just shared with you Matthew 6 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8, the Apostle Paul writes this. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate 
on these things. Meditate on these things. Hallelujah. I pray and I trust that you've received something this morning. And I believe that God has a wonderful plan for you this year. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us embrace this year. Let us seize the moment. Let us seize the opportunity. And let us constantly be reminded of the words that God gave to Joshua. See, I have given Jericho into your hand and its king and all its mighty men of valor. That means that nobody can stand in your way. That means that no challenge can stand in your way and hinder the plans and the purposes that God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Amen. Would you stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the final blessing. And I pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for every person, oh Lord God, that has been watching us this morning, that has been joining us this morning. I pray that your grace be upon them. I pray, Lord God, that you multiply them, that you cause them to be fruitful and prosperous in the things of God. I pray that it be well with them, well with their families, well with their children, in the name of Jesus. You are the God who remembers. And I thank you, my God, that you are mindful of your people. And I thank you, God, that you will visit them in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. Write to us. The details are appearing on the screen. Write to us and share with us what the Lord has done for you this day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Until next time. This is Pastor Ricardo Finn from FCI Raymond Newcastle saying, we love you very much. We pray for you often. So send us your prayer request. We pray for you daily and we delight to see you prosper in the things of God. May God richly bless you. Until next time, keep walking by faith and God bless. Goodbye.